hello, my name is Sean and welcome to the second episode of Holy Gaming. Hello, so uh, for what we're going to be doing for this episode is I'm going to uh, be reading an excerpt from my little book of prayers. I got this for Christmas and uh, I'm going to be reading this um, for the next few videos. It's like a little excerpt of uh, prayers of the afflicted. So we're gonna, I'm going to go ahead and read that before we start the sermon. Psalm chapter 25 verse 11 and then verse 16 through 21. Prayer of the afflicted in times of trouble. For the sake of your name, O Lord, forgive my iniquity, though it is great. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. The troubles of my heart have multiplied. Free me from my anguish. Look upon my affliction and my distress. Take away all my sins. See how my enemies have increased and how fiercely they hate me. Guard my life and rescue me. Let me not be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. May integrity and uprightness protect me, because my hope is in you. So that was... Uh, the prayers of the afflicted. All right, so today we are going to be reading James chapter two, the entire chapter. So we're having some type of technical uh, technical problems with uh, the website from because uh, I usually just gather the information from a sermon at my church, but to do a freestyle. But uh, there was technical difficulty, so I'm just going to go ahead and take over and just do it myself. And we're just going to read the entire chapter of James chapter two and just see where it goes. So this one's about and also. Uh, if you guys are wondering the game that I'm playing on here, I'm at, I'm playing this this time. It's not I didn't get it from a different source. This is called Balloon Tower Defense Number Five. You can get it on uh, free. You can play for free at this website called KiwiGames.com. It's it's a really fun free game. Okay. So anyways, this one is mostly about from what uh, a lot of people say. It's about from the faith with works thing, uh, which is uh, that starts at verse 14 and ends at verse 26 in chapter 2 of James. Uh, that's the big thing in here where it um, states uh, faith without works is dead. But uh, Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start from the beginning. So It starts out with uh, beware of personal favoritism and I'm going to read a little thing in my study Bible about what it says on faith and works. Alright, so it says the great former Martin Luther, champion of the doctrine of salvation through faith alone, never felt good about the epistle of James. He called it an epistle full of straw. In the preface of his 1522 editions of the, New, of the New Testament, and he put the book in the appendix, he preferred Paul's wording of the faith works equation, a man is justified by faith apart from the deeds of the law, Romans chapter 3, verse 28. In a sense, Luther had little choice. He was surrounded by men who said that good works could save you. He knew that God alone could save through faith alone, and his mission was to tell them. But Luther went too far when he put James in the appendix of the New Testament. Uh, neither faith nor works can be cut off and thrown away. James was taking aims at freeloaders, those who claim to not have needs for good deeds since they had faith. The reality is that you have to have faith. Works will naturally be a product. You cannot get rid of works just because they do not save you. You cannot sever the effect from the cause. Just as an apple tree will bear apples, so faith will produce good works. It also says that in Luke chapter 6, verses 43 and 44. So, Paul had the opposite problem in view when he wrote Romans. This letter targeted those to place their faith in the laws of Moses. Their trust was not their own good works and not in God. That is why Paul wrote a defense of faith. Uh, that is why Luther preferred it to James's defenses of works. Faith and works are not en enemies. True faith and righteous works go hand in hand. They are two parts of God's work in us. Faith brings a person to salvation and works bring that person to faithfulness. Faith is, faith is the cause, works are the effect. James believed it and so did Paul. So there's a little uh, thing that... Uh, was in the bottom of my uh, bottom of the study Bible here about faith and works. Okay, so we're going to be uh, beginning with James chapter two verse one. My brethren, do not hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with partiality. For if there should come into your assembly a man with gold rings and fine apparel, and there should also come a and a poor man in filthy clothes, and you pay attention to one wearing the fine clothes and say to him. You sit here in a good place and say to the poor man, you stand there, or sit here at my footstool, 
you have not shown partiality among yourselves and becoming judges with evil thoughts. So that one, uh, that's the one where it's, uh, it's something that has always hit me hard because when it comes to, because there's faithful men and then there's men who say they're good, who act good, but really are just as wicked as everybody else, you know, type of thing. And then there are the, then there's the ones who are rich and then because they're rich, they think that they're pretty much like better than everybody else. And so what James, so in the book of James in chapter two, it's starting off before the faith without works is dead. It's starting off with uh, telling all Christians, you know, don't show partiality towards one specific person because of their class in life or, you know, what they were born into with the, you know, the silver spoon in the mouth type of thing. Um, Cause also Jesus was the one who was, he was the one that was hanging out with all of the downtrodden people, all the rejects. I like to think of it as, you know, he was hanging out with, you know, the drug addicts, you know, the homosexuals having their parades, you know, type of thing is this uh, guy uh, that I, He's my friend on uh, Facebook. His name is uh, Daniel Silva. Uh, he put out a book called uh, It's All About Jesus. And he, uh, he said that one time where I thought it was really interesting because I never thought of Jesus like that. Where, you know, if he was here today, you most likely wouldn't see him in those big temples. You would see him on the street corners hanging out with homeless people and, you know, trying to help feed them and whatnot and hanging out with the people that. Um, our society would deem, you know, just bad people or, you know, like where other people would get annoyed and think like, oh my gosh, like, why is he hanging out with these people? Like, that's just, that's, you know, why doesn't he hang out with, you know, people like us, you know, because, you know, self-righteousness is so great, you know? So that, that's what I would think of Jesus and, you know, and so, okay, so I'm just going to stop it there. <laughs> okay. So verse five, listen, my beloved brethren. Has God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs or hires of the kingdom, which he promised to those who loved him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Do not the rich oppress you and drag you into the courts? Do they not blasphemy that noble name by which you are called? So, so God has chosen to use poor people who are rich in faith to advance his kingdom, those who love him and obey him, and endure the testing of their faith, will inherit the kingdom. This inheritance means more than entering the kingdom. It also involves ruling with Christ. So that's another thing in my study Bible. So, verse 8. If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Do you well, but if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For those shall keep the whole law and yet stumble into one point. He is guilty of all, for he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak, and so do as those who will be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Okay. So, I was looking up, um, just a few minutes ago, I was looking up what transgressor means, like, in the dictionary. And so I was able to find it because I wanted to get like a specific meaning as to what, um, as to what it's talking about in here about a transgressor or transgressions. And it says, uh, the meaning is to commit an offense by violating a law or command or to sin and also to act in violation of law. So it's pretty much just someone who's a transgressor or someone who rebels against law, pretty much like a, a rebel. So... Faith without works is dead. Verse 14. What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says that he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith itself, if it does not have works, is dead. So, there was a... Uh, an incident that happened back a few years ago that has to do with this verse. Um, I'll go ahead and just tell the story, but I won't use the person's name. So I read them this verse on an internet post that I put. Uh, I was being discipled by a person in California 
who I felt was, he just, he was not doing a good job. Like, it was one of those things where I was not supposed to be out of place type of thing. Like, you know, the whole, oh, you need to, um, you know, you need to keep above reproach, you know, type of thing. Um, and there was just, there was a lot of judgment, um, that I had to deal with from this specific person. This was back about two years, two or three years ago. And I remember that, um, so I guess there was some time where I really needed him and, you know, and I already been feeling, you know, the trial in a way or the pangs of a Christian pretty much because it's, I mean, it, it, for my life, it's just gotten to the point where like, I, I'm just completely losing trust in people because of all the different Christians I'm, I'm having to deal with, with this whole pointing finger problem and the whole megaphone problem, you know, of people I trusted. Um, so he dropped the ball. I don't remember what happened, but I remember that he dropped the ball and then I showed him this like, well, you know, I was naked to and destitute of daily food. And I told him, you know, you're telling me depart in peace and go be warm somewhere and you're just going to be okay. But I'm thinking, well, that's not going to help. It's like, you know, if a, a person comes up to you, like a homeless person says, you know, I, I need shelter, like, please help me. Like, well, I'm going to pray for you, you know, and everything's going to be okay. So, you know, off on your way. Thank you. And then you close the door. Well, you know, you just pissed off God, you know, because he didn't want that. He wanted you to help the person. So that's what happened. The guy didn't help me and we ended up going our separate ways. I've got my separate ways from like 10 different people already. Just from the whole blow horn thing. Just Christians uh, not being Christians pretty much. Anyway, so uh, verse 18. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, O oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was not working together with his works, and by works faith was made perfect? And the scripture says, the scripture says, was filled, which says Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. Likewise was not... Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way for as the body without the spirit is dead so faith without works is dead also which is one of the it's like the Psalm 27 or I think it's Psalm 27 or 23 it's one of those things where even seculars know that verse because you know it's um it can be used as cannon fodder type of thing um for, so, you know, verse 26 before it ends, chapter 2, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So, you know, faith and works should be put together. There is a close relationship between the two. Faith produces works and works makes faith perfect, meaning mature or complete. So, it's just, a, it's a thing where everybody can quote you know, verse 26, James chapter 2, everybody can quote that, faith without works is dead, it's pretty much saying stop being a hypocrite, you know, but that's also saying because I heard a funny quote on Facebook where it was saying, well, you know, you saying, it was like a Kevin Hart picture and it said, you saying you don't want to go to church because of the hypocrites says that you don't want to go work out at the gym because of all the people that are, um, all the people that just are not in shape. So it's like, no, you're the one really that's being the hypocrite, okay, you know. So, you know, print, you know don't judge. So anyway, so that's going to be chapter two. That's episode two of Holy Gaming. And next week, if uh, I can find the sermon and it works out right on the website of Crossroads Tucson, I'm going to be doing a freestyle of James chapter two once again, just from a different perspective, from a, the pastor's perspective, Pastor Kyle. So I'm going to be doing that. But if not... I'm going to go ahead and just do James chapter 3, and we'll just go through uh, the book of James if I'm not able to do it. And it's going to be about four or five episodes before we go on to our next book or next topic or subject or whatever. So thank you once again for viewing my episodes of Holy Gaming Episode 2. Go and check out the other channels and go and check out other video games and play as much video games as you can. Read the Bible as much as you can. See ya.